You're listening to the Fitzy and Whipper podcast. Recap of the week. Highlights, lowlights from the Fitzy and Whipper show. Let's get stuck into it. This week on the show... Oh, sorry, guys, we've got a news update coming through. Let's just uh, throw across to Matt Groot. What's going on, Matt? Paging Matt DeGroote across he's the Nova at, office. He's sitting there. He's um, just... Hello, Matt. You can turn your on. microphone on at any time you want. His um, mic isn't on. Was that not on. coming through? No. no. Uh, okay, sorry. I was talking. Now you've got to turn it on. Matt DeGroote has f***ed up again. Yes, Matt DeGroote started the week strong. <laughs> and his decisions only got worse as the week progressed. I'm going with MDG down to Bondi Inc. New tattoo for his left arm. Yeah. Be the buffalo. Be the buffalo. Be the buffalo. Are you honestly getting that? I thought that was a Don't joke. Laugh, mate. <laughs> I was telling Lisa last night, she said, I think the buffalo sounds dumb. I mean, sure, a buffalo tattoo is dumb. Yeah! But it's not getting the sex of your unborn child tattooed on the bottom of your foot dumb. That's about to give birth. Be enough, Very pain. Man, that's got to be enough. I've never heard anyone whinge oh, come on, like man. you have. What are you talking about? Yeah, Fitzy did that about nine years ago. Hold still. We've got him on a massage bed, yeah. BJ. Oh, God, it's bleeding. Things that I'm doing that you're not, that you... <laughs> The guys that are no strangers to tattoos joined us this week. I'm always on, baby. The boys from Peking Duck. Big, strong men. We're pretty used to their wild stories by now, but this one really took us by surprise. One time a mob boss was asking me to sleep with his wife, and that was quite a pickle. No, I didn't do it. It was terrifying. He's like, what, do you not want to? I was like, um, nah. And he's like, what, do you not think she's attractive? And I'm like, oh, no. For the record, this guy had four bodyguards. And, and, uh, and you had to hook up with did. one of the bodyguards. <laughs> yeah. Ruben and Bobo are having a kid soon. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to make them an awful game with you. There's some things that the guys rarely touch on the show. One of them being... Religion. Is everyone baptised in this room? Jesus. Which is for good reason. This reading is from ukuleles. <laughs> you- what is it? The classics. Jesus. They really don't know anything about it. Well, Moses was... He was basically the PA for God, wasn't he? Jesus. God gave well, he him did- the commandments. Like, he gave him some pretty big responsibility. Well, so he had basic admin. <laughs> Is that what you're suggesting? Yeah. Doing coffees up, and stuff. Picked up dry cleaning. Yeah. You are Sister Mary Clarence. And they've only got a slightly better understanding than Fitzy's kid who's in year seven. Why is Moses an influential figure? Huey just wrote down, because he was the first Catholic. Jesus. <laughs> I mean, he's had a swing. He's actually doing pretty good for the son of this guy. Oh, we no. went for a walk after a party one night. Oh, yeah. We hooked up in a church. I confessed my sins the next day. Okay, guys, there's only so many complaints that we can answer. Catch me, Jesus, I'm falling. Jesus, I'm falling. It was a big week of TV farewells. Lisa Wilkinson left the project. It's official. Bye-bye. Thank you. Peter Hellier was off. Well, I subscribe to your OnlyFans, and let me just say that first video, that is a doozy. (laughs) You should never kneel down at the back of a car. I've never seen a broom disappear so quickly. (laughs) So well done. (laughs) And when Fitzy broke this news to a current affairs, Tracy Grimshaw... Tracy Grimshaw, you've missed out on the Harry Styles tickets. (laughs) Sorry, Trace. Oh, damn. She packed it in. I'm not too old, I'm just a bit tired. So with the project and a current affair off the table, I guess we better switch it on to the soccer. That was the Spanish commentator reacting to Australia getting their first goal against France. But I swear I've heard it somewhere before. playing at home, that was a rooster crowing and then passing out. And things got pretty exciting in the studio too because the goal happened right in the middle of a pink song. Australia have scored at the World <laughs> Amazing. Cup Woo. Woo. Just to be deflated about ten minutes later. Oh, oh, no, France have just scored. Shivers. Well, that ruined that break. Ah, oh, damn. Dad, you've got to admire their positivity. <sighs> it's one all. Okay, we're <laughs> still in this. It's still a draw. <laughs> yeah, it's all over. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Whipper went for a bit of a wander down memory lane this week. Went through a bad stage in maybe grade three kindergarten. I used to wear these little velvet blue shorts. She wore blue. 
Unfortunately, I'd feel the stomach churning. No, I didn't make it to the bathroom. To have a bit of an accident in the back of the blue velvies. Was the night. Terrible. Yuck. No one wants a mud dragon in the back of the blue velvies. Softer wow. than satin. And Fitzy gladly helped him paint a vivid picture of his school life. Were the lobster rolls off or something that day? Yeah, I think they were. All right, kids, line up and get your little dip of caviar, everybody. There's no truffle on these (laughs) chips. You dare touch my velvet shorts. (laughs) I want the golden ticket, Daddy. (laughs) <laughs> and Whipper wasn't... Oh, no, sorry, Fitzy's still going. Where's my driver? I'm going home. You were known as Richie Whips. I want money. And once Whipper had completely run out of time to tell the story, Sarah asked him this. You know, Fitzy's... Why are we still doing mate? this? I don't know, mate. <laughs> I've lost this one, haven't I? <laughs> you were like the Aussies. You started really well. Oh, yeah. Go! See you guys next week. Yeah, it's all over. Uh, Doesn't matter. You're listening to the Fitzy and Whipper podcast.